This is Daniela Camboni for Kikko News, and joining me this Tuesday is Greg Saponis over at FMX Connect. Greg, thank you so much for being with us. Nice to see you, Daniela. So, Greg, I had many viewers email me last night concerned about damage done to gold yesterday falling below an important psychological mark. What are your thoughts these days on gold? Well, you know, what we really saw yesterday was just a belated reaction to all the different activity we had in Europe last week. Uh, we've had the rating agencies sounding the alerts uh, with Euro member states uh, and with individual banks in the said countries. Um, that has people nervous. And really just after looking over the whole course of the week, people have just concluded that really not a lot was accomplished. They sat down on Friday. They, they tried to pass some additional fiscal measures for member states, and they couldn't even get a consensus. Uh, the United Kingdom really stepped back and said they didn't want to be too heavily involved in what was going on forward. Uh, finally, the really big macro thing that happened was the ECB lowered interest rates which I just fundamentally weakened the euro and strengthened the dollar. Uh, and, and in these markets, all commodities, including gold, have been very sensitive to dollar prices. And, and that's really what kind of uh, sent gold selling off $50 yesterday, just a belated reaction to what happened. All right, Greg, we'd like to get your thoughts on what Dennis Gartman recently wrote. He said so much damage has been done to the psychology of the market in the past week and so many late longs have been caught off guard that we think wholesale liquidation and perhaps forced liquidation shall be the outcome. What are your thoughts on this? Well, he's, he's certainly right that uh, gold is no longer in the same rallying mentality it was even three or four months ago. Uh, I don't know that we're ready to flip the switch into a full bear market just yet. Uh, the sell-off was exacerbated by some technical weakness, specifically a failure for February futures to be able to kind of hold gains above 1750. But we still think there's a lot of support looking towards a 200-day moving average near 1616. Um, and below that, uh, the September 26 low of 1543.30. Uh, we would expect some more long-term buying to emerge near these levels. Um, now, if we do get down to those levels and the selling continues, then I would start looking at the charts and say, Gartman's probably right. But right now, I would hold off and say we could go down another $50 and be back to the same orderly market we've been seeing these last couple of months. All right, Greg, let's talk about today's FOMC meeting. Do you expect the Fed to be more optimistic? Well, there was actually a new Bloomberg survey that just came out. And what they said is uh, that two out of three economists that they surveyed are expecting the Fed to revisit its interest rate pledge by June. And um, just to briefly summarize what this pledge was, they said that they would keep uh, the interest rate between zero and 25 basis points through sometime, you know, in mid-2013. So the implication that the Fed is preparing to revisit this suggests that uh, they're less likely to be doing aggressive quantitative easing and that they might just feel a little better about the U.S. economy as a whole. All right, so optimism expected. Greg, let's switch on over to that chart you sent me. What should we be looking at technically today? Uh, I touched on the technicals briefly uh, along with the comments with Gartman, but uh, the key thing is that uh, key support was really broken uh, yesterday, 1700, 1705. It was really kind of just decimated in yesterday's sell off. Uh, so, from here, the next major support area is a 200 day moving average. And the gold actually didn't even go below the 200 day moving average, below the absolute low in September. Uh, so, we would be looking for gold to try and test that area and that we'll probably see buying emerge either at that level or maybe sometime before it as people try and front run uh, you know, all the technical traders out there in a professional market like this. All right, Greg, wrap it up for our viewers out there. Final thoughts for the day. Uh, this can definitely be a nerve-wracking market for investors when uh, you see assets like gold trading what seems in a counterintuitive manner to what's going on. Um, what those investors need to appreciate is that this is kind of a market that's dominated by, uh, by the need for dollars. And because of that, 
the other assets' fundamentals can fall a little bit to the wayside, at least for the short term. The thing is that for investors who really are long-term bulls, this is actually something to be happy about, not to be upset about, because it really lets them to buy the asset at what they think it's worth and not an asset that's desired for, for other reasons, not the least of which is how accountants can spin it on their balance sheets. All right, Greg, thank you so much for your thoughts today. Thanks, Daniela. Have a nice day. And thank you for watching. As always, you can email me your comments and questions at newsfeedback at kitco.com. For Kitco News, I'm Daniela Cambone.